morning we're going to think for just a few minutes about the season of Advent which we have just begun. Yesterday was the first Sunday in Advent. What does this mean for Christian people? The word Advent means coming or arrival. In the time of the New Testament, the time of Jesus, it was a word that was often associated with the arrival and the appearance of a king, of a ruler, of someone of great, great significance. But Scripture attaches that significance to God, to the presence of God and the work of God as the creator and the redeemer of all that is. Scripture attaches the arrival and the coming with God as the one who rules everything that is. And in the season of Advent, we remember and we hope that the one who rules all that is, is Jesus Christ. Now in the four seasons of Advent, what the church does is we remember the future. Remember the future. Let's think about that. The readings in the season of Advent come from the prophets, primarily Isaiah, the great, great writing prophet of the Old Testament. And they look forward to what God has promised to establish his kingdom, a kingdom that would be characterized by righteousness and justice and mercy and love and would bring about peace the ordering of the whole creation according to God's good purpose. So in Advent we read the Old Testament and it looks forward. At the same time we remember that what the prophets promised has truly and actually happened in Jesus Christ. That surprisingly in the form of a baby son of a carpenter, a wandering rabbi, a servant who suffered and yet is worshipped as Lord, God's kingdom has visibly and tangibly arrived. And so what we remember in Advent we celebrate in the present. At the same time, the New Testament, following the Old Testament, makes it very clear that all that God has promised, the establishing of his kingdom in its fullness and all of its glory, the restoration of all things, has yet to come about. And so Advent is a time of waiting, of patience, of hope. Not simply for four weeks until we get to Christmas, to celebrate the birth of Jesus, but awaiting as we walk by faith through time for the return of Christ, his final advent, his final appearing, his final coming in glory, when God will once and for all defeat his enemies, sin, evil, and death, and there will be a time that will have no end of unceasing praise of God. Now, how can we think about this in this busy time that runs from Thanksgiving to Christmas? One that's caught up in parties and planning for company, and going to the mall and shopping and all that we do. It's probably futile for us to say we're going to ignore all of that, and we, and we shouldn't. At the same time, Advent puts it all into perspective. It says that while what we do is a legitimate expression of joy and celebration, it is also limited. It is limited in that it will never satisfy us. What, will, what ultimately will satisfy us is that our, des our desire for God will be finally fulfilled in the final advent of Jesus Christ and the consummation, the restoration, the completion, the perfection of all things in glory. So as we move through this season, we're not only looking forward to a target date of December 25 when it's all over, we're also we're, we're remembering the future. We are hoping the past. 
Great promises have been made, promises that embrace the whole creation, not just each of, our, each of us in a personal way. Uh, God, what God is up to is much bigger, is much larger and grander and glorious than the salvation of individuals. What God has promised to do is deeply personal. It involves each of us. The coming of Jesus Christ assures us of that. God came to us in a person. At the same time, his ministry, which is the fullness of the Old Testament prophets and their promises, uh, made it very clear that the work of God and his rule extends beyond the personal and touches every aspect of life. It's for this reason that the season of Advent traditionally has been a penitential season. Something like the season of Lent. And again, this may sound strange to us. We're not accustomed to thinking this way. But if we think about Advent in terms of the first coming of Christ and the final coming of Christ, I think we'd all have to acknowledge that as we are still on our way, there is much that we do not know. There is much that we have failed to do. There is much that we have done that does not fit. It's not faithful to or appropriate for the end that God has promised. We have sin to confess. And the good news is that in, in confessing our sin, we look back and forward to a Savior whose name is Jesus Christ, the one who has come, the one who now continues to come to us through the work of the Holy Spirit, and the one who will come in the end and whose kingdom will have no end. Advent is a time of good news. We remember the future. We hope the past. God comes to us in the past, in the present, and in the future. Our whole life is part of a much larger, grander story of God and the world. And for that, we have reason to rejoice.